Hi, I'm Will, and I'm going to show you some tricks for how to prepare for your first cover gig in a new band. Uh, one of these gigs where you have to learn 50, 60, 70 songs, and you only have a week or two to prepare for it. I'm going to show you some tricks to, to make that possible. This video is brought to you by Music Over Miles' teaching program. So, like I said, uh, you don't have a lot of time to learn 60 songs uh, when someone says, hey, can you fill in on this gig next week? Uh, here's the set list. And you look at it and you go, oh my God, how am I going to learn all this music? I'm going to go through my technique for how to learn a bunch of music really fast. And this uh, assumes that you already know how to play by ear a little bit. You need to have some basic ear training skills like being able to pick out songs on the radio's chords most of the time, you know, being able to hear a one, five, six, four, stuff like that. Um, so we're assuming you've got some ear training skills, but this is more about how to prepare uh, the whole the whole big project of 60 songs. So step one is uh, to make a playlist of everything on the set list and put it in order on YouTube or Spotify. Uh, this Seems obvious, maybe, but it's easy to forget about doing it and to just look at that set list and go one song at a time and always pull it up. Make a set list, because then you can just, or make a playlist, because then you can just hit play and go, you know, clean your room or drive your car or whatever. You're passively preparing uh, to learn this music faster when you sit down to practice it by listening ahead of time. So get that playlist up and running as soon as possible and start listening to it every day. That's step one. Step two is to print off the band's set list. Uh, there should be a set list. You should be able to, to get, some, get a PDF or something from the band leader, and it should have the song's keys on it. And if it doesn't, I'd recommend you ask what the keys of the songs are. So you print it off, and then you go through, and with your playlist, you're listening, you highlight or circle Every song that has a keyboard solo or an intro that's keys heavy or just a moment or a feature, something that people will miss if it's not there. Because you're going to be playing a lot of parts that are, that honestly, you can just not play them and no one's going to be like, oh, where's that third rhythm part in the keyboard of Michael Jackson's, you know, uh, PYT or something. It's really most important that you learn those uh, solos and features, the, the spots in the music where the spotlight would be on you, you know? You want to be very prepared for those. That's priority one. Uh, so make a note of those on your set list and start to attack those first. Um, you can also, you know, write patch changes, like if, you know, this song has organ, this song uses synthesizer, this song uses piano. You can write those in as well. It's just another way to offload some of the mental strain of remembering all these things for a massive set list that you're learning in a short period of time. So printing it off, writing on your writing on the set list, highly recommend that. Next thing I would say is um, see if you can get a chord chart or chord charts for as many songs as you can from the band leader. If they're Depending on the band's level of uh, experience and professionalism, they may or may not have a chord chart book. Um, so if they have one, you definitely want to get your hands on that and start looking at it. It just speeds up the process. It lets you, um, gives you just a crutch to rely on uh, while you are on stage or while you're practicing, just so you don't have to, from scratch, learn everything by ear. Um, and if there are no chord charts, then you might consider making some of your own for the, like the really tough songs that you're having trouble remembering all the, the chord changes or all the rhythmic hits. Try making your own chart. That's a, that's a skill that will pay itself off very quickly because uh, it lets you basically prepare a, uh, an arrangement for an entire band if you have a good chord chart with rhythmic hits and stuff like that. You can, uh, someone calls you up and says, hey, can you get this song ready for our wedding tomorrow? And you've never heard it before, but you can make a chord chart, give it out to everyone in the band, and you guys are going to nail it if everyone's listened to the track ahead of time. So making your own chord charts definitely has a place. you got to have a little more time to do that, but it can give you a, a greater sense of confidence and security that you have something to rely on for those songs that are really challenging. Um, 
so if there are no chord charts available and you don't have time or energy, whatever, you just feel like you need to be at the piano practicing rather than making chord charts, just double down on listening. Listen to that playlist twice as much as you were because it's going to be extra important that you you know the song's sound and the flow of it and what's coming up. You know that stuff like the back of your hand. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by having heard the song five or six or seven or eight times. Uh, so listen, 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 listen. All right, so this is the last tip, and I think it's the most important. Uh, assuming you've prepared, you've done a, a honest job of being as prepared as you can, no one's going to be perfect on their first gig playing 60 songs that they had to learn that week or that month, whatever. It's more important that you, one, nail those little moments where you've got a solo and people are expecting something, even if they're not musical. That's one. And number two is that you're paying attention to the band. You're not buried in your chart. You're not buried in your hands. You're looking around. You, you can see the drummer and the bass player and the singer because they're going to be giving you all these cues and signals and things that will <laughs> make your life way easier if you're paying attention and way harder if you're not. You know, Maybe the band does it a little different than the record. Maybe they, they extend the outro and the drummer is going to go, oh, uh, uh, he's going to nod at you and go, keep going. And if you're buried in the chart, and you know exactly how it sounds on the record, you're just going to play that last chord and be done. The band's still going, and you would have 100% known to keep going if you were just paying attention and looked at the drummer. Or the bass player might say something like, like, don't play that. You Maybe maybe he does it differently than the record, and you just stop playing that chord that he's shaking his head at. Paying attention to the band is what makes you uh, a professional, because... Things are going to be different on stage all the time. There's always going to be change-ups. And uh, it's better to be tuned into the band and not know any of the music and be a skilled player, of course. It's better to be tuned into the band and not really know the music as well than to know the music inside and out and be completely disconnected from the band. Because not only is that going to mess up things like I just said, it's just not a good performance energy. It, it doesn't look good to be totally self-centered and looking down the entire time I mean, it's not fun looking so it's really important to stay tuned into the band all the better if you're as prepared as possible and then you know if you got the choice between looking at your chord chart the whole song or just doing your best and looking around do your best to remember everything and look around um so there we go uh i guess that's it for for me so in this video you learn some tips uh, and sort of a technique about how to practice and prepare for a covers gig that has a ton of music for you to learn in a short period of time. The first tip was um, to make a playlist on Spotify or YouTube and start listening to it as much as possible. Second tip was to print off the set list and highlight or circle all of the songs that have a keyboard solo or feature or start off the song with an intro. And the uh, third trick was try and get your hand on chord charts if they're available or make your own if you got time and energy. And the last tip was uh, pay attention to the band and be present on stage. Don't get buried in the charts or your hands. All right, uh, I'm Will, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.